Hey guys, Dr. Childs here. Today we're going to be talking about whether or not you can actually be allergic to iodine. Now there are a lot of people out there who claim to be allergic to iodine, who claim that if they come into contact with iodine, it causes an allergic reaction or it causes anaphylaxis. And this leads these people to completely avoiding iodine. Um, and it causes a lot of confusion, especially among thyroid patients. And I treat a lot of these thyroid patients who are you know, effectively becoming scared of iodine. So we're gonna break down why it's not possible to be, to be allergic to iodine. I'm gonna explain why. And I'm also gonna explain what you're probably experiencing if you think that you're allergic to iodine or if you've ever had a bad reaction to iodine. If you don't know me, I'm Dr. Childs. I'm an internist and I specialize in helping people with thyroid problems, helping people with hormone imbalances, and of course, helping people lose weight. But today is about the thyroid and well, about iodine and nutrition sort of more generally. So let's start by saying, first off, that there is no such thing as an iodine allergy. Now, I can say that with some degree of confidence for a couple reasons. I'm gonna talk about this uh, right now. So first of all, in order for your body to have an anaphylactic reaction, and when I talk about anaphylaxis, I'm talking about that is the life-threatening form of allergy um, that can kill you if you are exposed to whatever it is that you believe causes anaphylaxis. One of the more common, th common things would be like peanuts, right? And this is why, you know, in classrooms and in schools, people have to be really careful about being pe bringing peanut products and why anybody who has anaphylaxis to peanuts, they have to, they have to carry with them an EpiPen, right? Because if they don't and they get exposed, they might die, they might be unable to breathe and so on. Now, some people claim that they have this same sort of reaction when they're exposed to iodine, but that is, that's not really possible. I'm gonna explain why here. So first of all, in order for this process to occur, you have to have something that is sufficiently complex that your immune system can identify that thing and say, hey, we're going to create antibodies to that thing and then next time we see it, we're gonna blow up and it's gonna be IgE mediated reaction and we're gonna cause this anaphylactic, um, anaphylactic shock and anaphylactic like experience. Iodine by itself is not complex enough for that to occur, okay? It is just a single um, compound or, or element and it cannot, it doesn't have the required complexity to trigger that, at, um, that, um, that immune mediated response. It cannot do it by itself. Now, a lot of people will say, okay, well, Maybe it isn't the iodine, but it's something that is connected to the iodine. In other words, that's called a haptin. So sometimes they'll say, well, I know it's probably not the, the iodine itself, but iodine is then bound to something over here. So it could be another protein complex or something like that. It, then in that way, iodine is carrying that complex in. The immune system is identifying this compound and then having anaphylaxis to that. Now that can happen and probably does happen in some people, especially those people who get um, iodinated contrast, right? So when you go into the doctor's office and they put um, iodinated contrast in you for a CT scan, some people have anaphylaxis and they believe it's to the iodine, but it's not. It's most likely something bound to, um, bound to the iodine itself, not the iodine itself. And so in that way, a lot of confusion arises. But iodine by itself, what you have to understand, is not complex enough to cause this reaction. The it's really just inert, okay, by itself. Now, I also know this because iodine is required for life, okay? So let's, say, let's take the scenario in which you thought that you were had an anaphylactic reaction to iodine, you would not be able to survive because you would not be able to produce thyroid hormone. If you did not consume iodine, um, iodine is required for the production of thyroid hormone and your body cannot create iodine, which means you must get it from some source, okay? Dietary, really. You can either take it from a supplement or you can eat it from foods. But if you don't have enough iodine, you will eventually not produce thyroid hormone and you'll go into um, a myxedema coma and eventually die if you don't get it. So having, in terms of evolution and in terms of um, creation, it wouldn't be a very good system if you were allergic to something required for life, all right? So that's, that's another reason why it's very unlikely that this thing occurs. And then thirdly would be that iodine is found in all sorts of foods, okay? So if, if you're claiming that you have an anaphylactic reaction to iodine, then you have to explain why you're not dying every time that you eat a banana or a strawberry or deli meat or fish or tuna or whatever it is, right? Iodine is found in so many foods that it's more likely you're getting it, even salts, by the way, it's more likely that you're running into iodine all the time and not even realizing it. But there are a huge number of people, but, so this is why you cannot really have a true life-threatening allergy to the compound or, or element iodine by itself. Now, can you react negatively to iodine? And that is, yes, you absolutely can react negatively. So reactions to iodine do exist, but they are not anaphylactic in nature. And therefore, iodine should not be avoided for that purpose, okay? So I have a lot of people that will you know, when I talk about my product, oh, by the way, I should also mention that I have a, you know, an ongoing database of about 40,000 people at this time, probably closer to 45,000 people, people who have tried my products, which contain iodine, okay? So, and I've never seen this issue in over 45,000. Now that doesn't mean it won't, you know, it can't occur possibly. Um, it just means that the statistical likelihood of this occurring is very small and it's getting smaller and smaller as more and more people use these products. But let's talk about the negative reactions that can occur to iodine. So 
problems can arise potentially under the right circumstances when using iodine, but this is not the same thing as having an allergic reaction to iodine. So let's talk about what potentially could happen in certain scenarios. And these are the scenarios which cause a lot of fear, especially among thyroid patients. So the first thing is that people will, doctors especially will say that iodine, if taken, can cause thyroid problems. And that is actually true, okay? It does happen, it's very rare, but it can happen. But as I mentioned, the system would be very poor if this happened frequently because iodine is required for life, your body cannot produce it. So again, this happens very rarely because you need to be taking it. Now, when you avoid iodine for, these, for, for fear of these uh, issues that we're gonna be talking about, it often causes um, problems to your thyroid function, all right? And this manifests as low thyroid, potentially even Hashimoto's thyroiditis and so on. But I do wanna talk about these fish for a matter of completeness. So yes, you can experience, experience some thyroid problems when taking iodine, but this is usually dose related, okay? So what you'll have is a lot of people who will say, you know, they'll start an iodine supplement and then they'll say, oh, it caused Hashimoto's thyroiditis, therefore iodine is dangerous and no one should ever use it. Well, the problem with that is they were taking a dose which was you know, up to 1,000 times the daily recommended um, allowance. So they're taking a dose which is 1,000 times and then applying that broadly to everybody saying iodine is dangerous because it caused problems in their specific situation. But the problem wasn't iodine, it was their dose. So most of these issues occur um, related to the dose that you're taking. But taking Iodine in high doses has been known to trigger hyperthyroidism. So what happens is your thyroid definitely needs to use iodine to create thyroid hormone. If you suddenly flush the system with a ton of iodine, your body in some situations may take that iodine, especially if it has certain nodules that are producing it, and it can produce excess thyroid hormone because it says, hey, we have a lot of supply here. Let's use it for what, what we're supposed to use it for. We're just overusing it in this case, and let's produce thyroid hormone. So if you take a huge massive dose, depending on the situation and so on, it is feasible and possible or probable, not probable, um, possible, that it can increase thyroid hormone and cause hyperthyroidism. Then we have another group of people who may experience what's called Hashimoto's thyroiditis. This is an autoimmune disease of the thyroid gland. And what has happened in some places, especially some um, developed countries, is as we've added iodine to uh, salt and as salt has been, um, iodine's been more evenly distributed throughout the population, there has been, in some cases, an increase in Hashimoto's thyroiditis. And this is felt to be, be um, secondary to the iodine, right? That's what a lot of people assume. They say, well, if iodine increased then Hashimo and the Hashimoto's increased at the same, at the same time, Therefore, we believe iodine caused the Hashimoto's. Well, it's not quite that simple because it turns out that a lot of the people who develop Hashimoto's as a result of taking iodine, it is due to the fact that they are also concurrently um, selenium deficient. So it's really um, an iodine deficiency that um, kind of exposes existing selenium deficiency as well. But it's not, it's not the iodine by itself necessarily which is causing that problem. And again, this tends to be dose related. If you stick to low doses of iodine that your body needs, remember it's required for life, these problems tend not to exist unless you are one of those um, unlucky few people either genetically or if you have these concurrent issues like selenium deficiency as well. But it can simply be avoided if you just replete those nutrient deficiencies prior to or at the same time as taking iodine. All right, so I wanna talk about one other thing as it relates to iodine, and that is the idea of negative reactions. So I kinda of talked about some of these negative reactions, but these are exceedingly rare. We're talking, I mean, I would put this as maybe one in 10,000, maybe one in 20,000. Very, very, very uncommon, very, very, very rare. But we do have people who take iodine and they experience potentially other issues. They don't experience thyroid issues, but they experience things like acne or rashes, headaches, and things like that. They experience all these sort of unexplained symptoms. And that says, they then sort of say to, you know, to everyone, anyone that they meet, they'll say, hey, I'm allergic to iodine. I may not be allergic anaphylactically, meaning it's not life-threatening, but I definitely can't tolerate it. And there is a, there is a explanation for that as well. So to explain it, I need to kind of talk about a little bit of uh, chemistry and biology here and mix it together. So if you look at the periodic table of elements, we're going way back to you know high school biology here. Um, there is a row of elements and it has several of them. So it has chlorine, um, fluorine, it has iodine and bromine. Now all these are in the same table on the same, um, to the far right on the table. And they don't go in this order. I don't remember which order they go in by the way. So you can correct me if I'm wrong on the order. But the idea is they all look similar, okay? They all have the same outer electron shell, which means that they are all competing for the same binding sites. Now imagine this scenario. Imagine you want iodine on thyroid hormone, which in this case is T4, but chlorine takes its place because it looks similar enough to iodine. So in a lot of human bodies, like yours, especially as you're reading this, you may be, have a lot of extra chlorine, fluorine, and bromide, which by the way are found commonly in toothpaste and um, brominated drinks, they're in ca um, caffeine, caffeinated drinks and so on. So you're running into these kind of compounds on a daily basis. They are competing for binding with iodine. So you may have an iodine here, a fluorine here, and a chlorine here. Now this inactivates the thyroid molecule and hormone itself, so it's no longer active because you want iodine here, not fluorine. 
Um, but what may happen is as you take, as you bring in iodine into the system, suddenly now there's competition for binding on these sites. And guess what's happened? Guess what happens if all of a sudden iodine pushes this fluorine molecule off? Well, your body wants to get rid of it. So it eliminates it through, through your body, right? And one of the ways that it eliminates it is through the skin. Now, this could be bro, uh, bromine or I, uh, chlorine or whatever it is. It doesn't matter. But the idea is that this concept occurs as you take iodine. And guess where a lot of this comes out? It comes out through the skin. So this can manifest as things like rashes. It can manifest as things like pustules and acne and so on. Now, this isn't a bad thing. This isn't an allergic reaction. This is your body kicking off the things that you don't want um, on your thyroid hormone. It's a good thing. But it results in some negative um, symptoms, at least temporarily. A lot of people, like I said, who experience this believe they are having an allergic reaction when they're not. They're actually experiencing something called bromoderma. You can look it up in dermatology um, textbooks and so on. This is a known phenomenon that your body will excrete these halides or halides, depending on uh, how you say it. They'll excrete these things out of your body as you consume iodine and kick them out. But again, you don't want these in your body to begin with because they're impairing your thyroid function. And a lot of people have these negative reactions where they, where they take iodine because they've had tons of these um, these compounds floating around in their body, they're kicking them off, they're detoxing them out of their body, and they think that they're having an allergic reaction, and they're not. I do see this eh, somewhat common. I would say maybe between 1% and 3% of the population of people who use iodine as a supplement. This does occur and can occur, but again, it is not a problem. You don't. You want these things out of your body. You can, you can slow down on the gas pedal in terms of how much iodine you're giving yourself, so you can slow down that detoxification process. That's perfectly fine, but you still need that iodine because, as I, went, as I talked about in the very, very beginning here, it is required for life. But don't make the assumption or, the, or don't confuse the idea of a true um, anaphylactic allergy to iodine with the negative reaction that can occur secondary to the displacement of these, um, these elements. And, and also don't confuse that with true thyroid problems that can occur secondary to the misuse of iodine related to the dose. So this is somewhat of a fairly complex topic, um, but hopefully this sort of explains it um, and explains why you really, the, the moral of the story that you should take out here is don't be afraid of iodine. For the vast majority of people, 99% plus, it's very you know, safe and effective to use and required and necessary and will help your thyroid function. It won't actually harm you. So that's all I have for you guys here. If you have any questions, please leave them below. Um, I can explain or go into more detail. Obviously, I can't hate everything, but hopefully I got enough here to give you an idea of why iodine, you really can't have an allergy to iodine. So that's all I have for you guys today. And otherwise, I will see you in the next one.